Do 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 Tuesday tips for you. Hi, this is Dr. Sharon Celine, and despite the cheerfulness of my logo, I'm going to be talking about something pretty serious today, which is about depression and suicidality. Given the recent deaths of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, and in my own community, a beautiful young woman, age 20, bought a Xanax on the street from a drug dealer in a, another city of the United States, and it was laced with fentanyl and she died. And it seems to me that I wanted to connect with all of you and give you some of the signs of depression in ADHD teens and also uh, how to prevent um, suicide, if you can, by understanding the signs of that as well. Obviously, in this short uh, li Facebook Live event, I'm not going to be able to give you all of the answers and go as deeply in depth as I would like, but please check out my website, www.drsharonceline.com, for more information on these most important topics. Studies have shown that 9 to 38 percent of children and teens with ADHD are depressed. Now, what are the signs of depression? So the signs of depression can be withdrawal uh, socially or physically, spending more time in one's room. It can be a low self-esteem and sometimes kids will even comment, I hate myself or I don't want to be here anymore. You can see an increase in sleep problems, either sleeping too much or um, having trouble waking up, uh, which was different than what you had seen previously in your child. There could be an overfocus on social media and concern about what people think about them. You could also see a lack of interest in things or activities or people which previously were quite compelling for your child. Sometimes you might even see kids start to give things away who are older kids, teenagers, who might be toying with the idea of hurting, uh, of hurting themselves. Now, a recent study came out that suicides in the United States are up 25% since 1999. This is very concerning. The World Health Organization, based, the World Health Organization recently uh, posted that 800,000 people die by suicide yearly. Uh, in addition, there can be some suicide contagion, sort of look, sort of copycat suicides in certain communities. If, in particularly where young people are, one a suicide may be one person may occur with one person, and then other kids who may have been toying with that idea or are feeling some some or feeling a sense of depression or hopelessness may follow as well. Um, so I've named some of the risk factors for serious depression, which are also the risk factors for suicide. And how can you as parents counteract these and keep your eyes and ears open for signs of depression or indications of self-harm that you would want to attend to right away? So the first thing is, when someone's feeling depressed, uh, what they don't want is to be told that their problems really don't matter that much. They don't want to be cheered up or offered advice. What they want is acknowledgement that they're hurting right now and they're in pain and that you're there with them in that pain. You can't assure them that things will get better. You can explain to them why you think they might get better, but you can't promise them things will get better, so don't do that. Um, you might want to talk to them about how much they matter to you and other people in their lives, particularly because when people are feeling de depressed, they often can't see how they matter to people and what their connections are, so it's important that you try to do that. You also want to show up and what I mean by that is spend time with them so they're not so alone. If your child tends to uh, hang out in their room by themselves much more than they used to, then try to do things that can draw them out. Maybe watch a TV show together. 
see if they'll help you make uh, dinner um, or bake cookies. Try to do some activities with them where you can have casual conversations and they'll and get them to share what they're thinking about or what's on their mind. Don't pepper them with a lot of questions that doesn't make someone who doesn't feel good about themselves want to talk more. What they want is to have open space where they can offer things up or just know that you're there. Give a hug, hold their hand. Um, I think that with teenagers who are depressed, that it's important that you ask them directly if they've had thoughts of hurting themselves, whether it's through cutting or um, thoughts of longer term harm. And ask them to be honest with you about it. This is a scary time. It's scary to feel depressed and it's really scary for parents to see their kids depressed. So honesty is really an important policy here. Regardless of their answer, actually, what you want to do is go with them to an appointment to talk to someone about it. And the first person that often can be helpful if your child refuses to see a counselor or a therapist is their pediatrician. Um, state the situation with the pediatrician while you're in the room. And then what I would encourage you to do if the pediatrician doesn't ask you to leave is to leave yourself because they're skilled in talking with children and teenagers about um, these kinds of feelings and making recommendations and referrals for someone who could help your son or daughter. The other thing that is a risk factor for depression or suicidality is an increased use of substances, illegal substances. And I would take the time to talk with your kids about what they're doing and when they're doing as much as you can. Not a prying, but sort of a low key, hey, I'm wondering, you know, if you've tried marijuana, I'm wondering if you are, have had beer before, um, to have a conversation with them without consequences, but just a conversation because you want to have an idea of what your child is doing. When this 20 year old who was not suicidal um, died at her funeral, the rabbi said in the very first sentence that she had died because she had bought Xanax on the street and um, took it to help her sleep. And it wasn't a morality tale, it was just a fact. And it was a fact to point out to young people that we're not invincible and that here were 450 people who cared about her and would have prevented her from taking that Xanax in a nanosecond. So I hope that the, this information is helpful for you. If you have questions about suicide, I encourage you to call the National Suicide Hotline at 1-800-273 T-A-L-K. I also urge you to uh, go to any uh, the National Suicide website, which has a lot of interesting information. Um, and I encourage you to go to my website, which has information about depression as well and kids with ADHD. Thank you for joining me. This is Dr. Sharon Celine. Have a good evening.